Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Patnesh Jain for his uh, uh, generous opportunity uh, rendered on me to undergo this fellowship for a month. Uh, before coming here, I was so skeptical to uh, to grab this opportunity because you know, like I've been doing Scopy for some time, and uh, one month fellowship, I thought I didn't need it, but uh, now I fully realize that it is very well deserved and worth the opportunity for me. Thank you so much, sir, for, uh, for this opportunity for me. So uh, it has been a great learning curve for me. Uh, especially, I learned uh, very novel techniques, which are completely different from what I learned before, and which have not been yet described in, in any other test fixer journals. So one of them is uh, uh, this procedure: combined trochloplasty and uh, uh, medial patellofemoral complex advancement in recurrent patellar dislocation with severe trochlear dysplasia, which is uh, I don't think which is a, a rare uh, occurrence in our day-to-day -day, uh, uh, sports injury patients. So, introduction: acute uh, patellar dislocation tend to affect especially teenagers and young adults uh, because they might be more active in sports and may be followed by recurrent dislocations. Recurrent rates of up to 60 percent have been reported in the literature. This uh, emphasizes the high risk in young and active patients. Trochlear dysplasia is usually uh, an undermined or, or uh, less known, less recognized uh, uh, risk factor for patellar low femoral instability, which has lately been uh, more uh, popping up because of advancement in our understanding uh, in the, in the patho, uh, pathophysiology of this, of this disability or uh, derangement. Dijon et al. found 96% of patients with the history of a true patellar dislocation and evidence of trochlear dysplasia. In trochlear dysplasia, the trochlear is a shallow, flat, or dome shaped or a cliff shaped uh, with inadequate bone resistance to lateral uh, patellar dislocation. As we know, there are two dynamic and, and static uh, restraints for patellar dislocation. So the static resistance is uh, less than in trochlear dysplasia, which predisposes to recurrent dislocation of the patellar joint. Uh, patella. It is recognized that the medial lateral flattening results from the accessory material uh, centrally. The, uh, as you know, the patella engages from knee extension to flexion into the trochlear groove. So, any dysplasia of the proximal extension is mainly responsible for the disengagement and possible predisposition to the dislocation of the patella. Uh, Sanguangse and MS have shown the most important factor affecting the stability of patella is the shape of trochlea, which, in, in case of dysplasia, uh, predisposes to recurrent, recurrent uh, uh, dislocation of the, of the of the knee of the patella. In the cadaveric experiment, the flattened trochlear groove by performing an osteotomy of the lateral face of the trochlear effectively mimicking trochlear dysplasia. A reduction is observed in the force required to dis dis uh, displace the patella by 10 mm was seen throughout the range from 0 to 70, which is maximum at 70 days of flexion. Patella instability is a common problem as uh, we see uh, orthopodics, uh, physiotherapists osteopaths uh, in the US with an overall instance of 5 to 7 per 100,000 but in the, the young age group, young adults that is 10 to 17 age group it is as high as 29 per 100,000. This is a 15 to 44 percent chance of recurrence. Uh, there is a uh, 15 to 44 percent chance after the first episode of dislocation and at least a 50 percent chance if not more of further recurrences after a second episode of dislocation. So even without recurrent instability, there's a fairly high instance of ongoing mechanical symptoms from the patellar femoral joint. Approximately 50 patient, patients do not get back to their previous level of sporting activities. So as you know, diagnostic evaluation is very important before we, we uh, zero down to the diagnosis and surgical plan. So, I mean, as you know, physical examinations of paramount importance uh, in this particular case. So we need to examine the patient apprehension test, uh, lig ligament insufficiency, and again, uh, the uh, evaluation of the yes, evaluation of the particular femoral joint includes, uh, as I said, all uh, the apprehension sign and also the lateral transition of the particular uh, up to 90 degrees of knee flexion from zero to 90. So the J sign is evaluated with the patient sitting and performing an active knee extension. 
uh, and if the pedal begins to translate laterally prior to the last 30 of terminal like knee extension, this is consistent with the flag or convex trochlea and pushing or allowing the pedal to drive laterally. So uh, once we examine the patient physically and we uh, we suspect uh, trochlear dysplasia, uh, we should proceed to the imaging where there are various uh, views of the x-rays including the AP view, 45 degrees, uh, PA notch view, lateral and 15 to 20 axial merchant radiographs. A lateral view allows assessment of the digital classification which we are going to dis uh, discuss uh, in next slides. An axial assessment of dysplasia is made from uh, axial MRI cuts. From the axial MRI cuts, the lateral proclean inclination angle is measured. A measure of zero or a negative measurement on the first ledge showing articular cartilage confirms a flat or convex trochlea, which is an indication for a groove deepening trochlear which is our uh, uh, main uh, target here. Main uh, target here. So this is uh, digital classification. The digital uh, classification is assessed using lateral knee radiographs as well as CT as an additional uh, mode of uh, uh, study. Here I'm already. So the classification, as you see, type A, there is shallow trochlea and the crossing sign. The crossing sign is the sign where uh, they, they meet the, the, uh, the outline of the, uh, of the trochlea and the anterior femur. They meet, that is the crossing sign with the shallow trochlea. And second, we see the crossing sign and a supratrochlear spur. Supratrochlear spur is there and where we see the trochlea is flat. As we discussed either it is convex or flat. So in the third one, we see the crossing sign along with a double contour. Double contour is there where we see two contours. Here we don't see that and here we see uh, a line radiographically it is very clear. So this is a double, double contour ending below the crossing, the crossing sign. You can see the crossing sign is here and double contour. This line is ending below the crossing sign. And there is medial hypoplasia of, uh, of the, of the corner and, and the lateral convexity uh, of, the, of the trochlea. And this one is a cliff-like, we see in the, in the uh, notch view, we see the cliff-like lateral uh, contour, uh, and there is a uh, presence sign again here with a supratrochlear spur and double contour sign is evident here as well. So this is another, another picture depicting the digital classification. So we can see the shallow trochlear there, flat trochlear here, lateral convexity and medial hypoplasia. You can see appreciate very clearly in type C where the medial is, uh, is hypoplasia and uh, the patella that is most of the patella facets are engaged onto the lateral, con lateral convex uh, uh, contact. And there's a clip shaped in the, in the type D. So <coughs> coming to the surgical technique, uh, extensive lateral review shows that almost all the surgeries so far described in various uh, articles or in textbooks are done by lateral parapatellar approach where where the MPFL reconstruction done by medial approach thus necessitating two different incisions because for trochlear they do uh, go approach the trochlea by a lateral approach and, and while repairing the MPFL they approach it medial necessitating two different approaches uh, approaches thereby uh, as we know it enhances the risk of infection uh, vascular compromise, healing problems, and, and it's uh, cosmetically not as appealing as the procedure we are going to describe. And it's obviously a cumbersome procedure. We propose a novel technique where both the other procedures which are essential to get back, track back the patella onto its original or, or native, uh, sorry, uh, original path of the patella tracking, uh, which are essential to stabilize the patella can be done by a single medial parapatellar approach which is which most of us are very familiar even the orthoplasty surgeons it uh, uh, is similar to the approach we uh, we uh, we do in uh, total knee replacement which can later if the patient requires down the lane uh, it can be converted into a total knee replacement so that with the same approach we can uh, complete both the procedures with much ease and familiarity to the operating surgeon and the learning curve is very 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 less it's much superior and faster wound healing and less complications with excellent results. So, uh, <clears throat> this is uh, one of the intro pictures where we can see after dissection, we can see uh, the MPFL uh, is thinned out and, and has given up and it's not holding the patella anymore with no medial constraint to the, to the, to the patella. So, 
uh, as a regular practice, we uh, accelerate the like with HMR bandage, the tonic is inflated at 8 to 10 cm incision as the cheek PR incision, medial parameter incision is, is, is done, is done uh, and carried out to the middle retinaculum. Middle retinaculum, when we do, the only difference is when you, when you do a total knee replacement, we directly that dissect down to the bone, but here we, uh, we carefully dissect the middle retinaculum uh, till we reach the MPFL, it is identified and isolated. Then the cordyceps tendon is split proximally until the patella is easily dislocated laterally. The ligamentous mucosum and lateral patella fat are also routinely cut to uh, increase the uh, exposure. Trochlea exposed superiorly, uh, and we confirm our, our radi radiological findings that uh, the displacement of, uh, of, uh, of the trochlea, uh, lateral hyperplasia of the lateral condyle, and uh, median uh, hypoplasia of the medial femoral condyle. The trochlear morphology is assessed visually and by palpation, which I'm going to show some pictures. Uh, 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 next, the next slides. The patient native doctor who is highlighted with the surgical marking pen. This is very important where we are going to mark the native uh, trochlear groove of the patient and the uh, intended trochlear groove uh, to increase the particular drag. <coughs> by the use, uh, by use of the roof of the intercordial notch as reference, the plan new groove which we intend to uh, to to develop now is marked to and just lateral to the roof of the notch. The distance between the planned new groove and the proximal of the native groove is measured. This distance represents how much the trochlear groove will be lateralized. Uh, prior to flap elevation, the marking may approximately 5 mm below the quantal surface of the trochlea. That is the plane where we are going to do the osteotomy, uh, <coughs> flap osteotomy. A thin wrapper of subquartal bone is elevated with specially designed trochloplasty jig of 5 mm osteotomy, trochloplasty osteotomy jig. The initial cut is started approximately 1 to 1.5 cm distal to the location of the distal aspect of the new groove and is continued all the way around the distal aspect of, of to the distal aspect of the medial. From lateral to medial, we are going in uh, uniformly with the jig. The flap is then elevated to expose the subcontinental bone of the trochlea. Here, we need to be very careful to make sure there is no uh, fracture of the trochlea the, the, because that is too thin, it's just 5 millimeters. We should uh, exercise extra care to ensure that it is raised as one single flap so that the fixation back will be easier. <coughs> Any extracular spurs, depending on uh, the condition of the, of, the, of, the, of the bone there, native bone. Uh, our prominence is removed with a curved osteotum so that the proximal trochlea is flush with the anterior cortex. While fixing it back, it should get uh, flush with the uh, anterior cortex so that there won't uh, be any chance of further complications post surgery. Uh, once satisfied, the new bill is achieved, the flap is attached back to trochlea with a 5 mm non plus anchor amplified with four, uh, four strands of number two vital sutures, each arm of which are suitably anchored onto anterior femur over trochlear flap to recreate modified groove on the new uh, plan, newly planned uh, uh, trochlear groove with the help of modulus anchor switches 3.5 mm. The first anchor is placed in the distal aspect of the new groove uh, we, uh, with a 5 mm and a 5 mm anchor and the four strands as we discussed are placed each strand to a 3.5 mm anchor placed at proximal level aspect of the new groove at four dis uh, different uh, uh, places to uh, firmly, uh, uh, firmly attach the, the flap to the uh, to the femur. Manual reduction of flap is performed during anchor placement to minimize the chance of suture back to and to maximize the depth of the new groove. Four strands of, uh, of suture are similarly placed with suture anchor proximally both medially and laterally to the sec to secure the medial and lateral facets of the trochlea. So <coughs> this is a retractable feature where you can appreciate the. Uh, lateral hy hyperplasia of the later, uh, so lateral femoral cordial and uh, the middle uh, patellar facet is 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 uh, is, uh, is degenerated there. So this, you can see the markings there. Uh, this the first one is a native native uh, native trochlear groove and second is the intended uh, newly uh, molded uh, marking of the trochlear groove. So this is the first 5 mm uh, suture anchor uh, at the uh, non-weight bearing uh, distal aspect of the, of, the, of the marking where we are fixing 
four knotless uh, white wheel switches, four strands, no, sorry, six strands. And this is, uh, we are trying to uh, uh, create a new, new uh, trochlear group with uh, uh, augmented by the strands, like two strands. <coughs> this is the almost the final picture, uh, just before the fixation of the strands. So next comes the MPFC uh, advancement, where wherein we uh, we we take bytes. This is the torn MP MPFL with the complex medially. So we take uh, with the help of two uh, 1.7 uh, phase suture angers, we we take uh, deep bytes in the MPF MPF complex and and uh, uh, tighten the MPFC uh, to to the. Uh, to the uh, medial as well as patella, I am making sure there is no gaps are left and it is tightly secured uh, to ensure that there is there is uh, very strong attachment, reattachment of the MPFC to the to the patella, thereby uh, negating any chances of further dislocations. So this is the technique we learned, which is very easily reproducible, even uh, medium uh, uh, like mid career orthopedic surgeons, so even the freshers can try doing this because this is a uh, relatively easier and uh, can be easily reproduced with little bit of care and extra cautions. This can be successful, complete, giving excellent results to the patients. Thank you so much.